right. I think we are live. I think this is working. If you can't hear me, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> uh, I usually have to go through this song and dance. Um, I can show up this here. Everybody checking in. Why is this here? Stick of root beer says you can hear me. Okay, good, awesome. And as long as there's no annoying neck echo, that's also good. Uh, hi, I'm Chris. I work on Stonehearth. I work on the Builder for over a year now in Mega Uh Yeah, we're gonna talk about the Builder today. Uh, we might talk about some other rando stuff today. Uh, do hey, Joe Boxer. So you all will be drinking while coding. Uh, I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> Didn't end the last time. That was how the first builder got uh, got created. It was it was a lot of liquor. Um, so trying to stay off of that. Oh, Bruno Supremus is low volume. Uh, I'll try to bring this a little closer in. Is there an input setting somewhere? Or hopefully this will be all right. I can just shout as well. Hopefully that'll be. Why <laughs> next recording devices? Hello, hello. Oh yeah, that does look a little bit low. Levels, microphone boost. Let's make it a little bit. Oh, I can't do that. Really? Okay. Uh. Hmm. Tool. Do do do. Okay. Hopefully this will be okay. Um. I will try to be a little bit lo louder and enunciate a little bit more, even than usual. Um. Okay, Builder, where are we? Where are we going? What's happening with it? Uh, it's coming along quite well. Uh, I'm going to go and show you some stuff. Uh, release plan. Oh, I don't want it to take up the whole screen. Do, do, do. Also, to build suspense, because I just said release plan, and people are like, wait, what? One second. Do, do, do. Uh, I'm hoping, and I think probably with good 95% probability, um, we will have a sort of really unstable branch cut, not this this Monday, but next Monday. Um, and what that is going to mean is, uh, so we have like our unstable branch, we have our stable branch, this is going to be like the really unstable branch, um, and we're going to go and put, you know, a build up on that. We probably won't say anything on stonehearth.net, but we will go and advertise it on discourse. Um, and that will be, and it'll so it'll be password protected, not that it's going to be like some big secret or something. We're not trying to limit the number of people so much as limit the kind of people that, are, that we want to engage with it at first. Um, it's a big, giant, moving part. It's a huge piece of code. And I want to make sure that before this actually gets onto stable, um, it's actually in like, fairly polished you know uh, uh, a fairly polished state and so we've been we've been doing this like we've had our internal play tests uh, recently we've been engaging a couple uh, a couple people for uh, a couple of sort of friends and family uh, trusted testers uh, to go and, and start working on and, and hammering on and their feedback has been super invaluable um, and so then there'll be this sort of next stage where this is like the building unstable branch where we're gonna we'll advertise it on discourse and everyone can go and, and go yeah secret code we, we have to come up with a name and we want the password to be something like like this build will eat your saves or something like that. Just to, just to let you know that this is going to be, it might be a little bit rough. It shouldn't be too bad. It shouldn't be too bad, but still. Um, and then after that, once we've, we've probably be on this super unstable branch for like two weeks, I hope, no more than that, uh, then we'll translate, we'll, we'll transfer to the stable or unstable branch. Again, another one or two weeks, kind of sort of exponentially opening up the number of people uh, that can go and get access to it. And, and, and then after that, we land on stable and hopefully everything is good and awesome. Uh, fingers are crossed, although it's not really a matter of luck or, or finger crossing. It's just a lot of hard work, a lot of beating down on bugs, uh, you know, just that's basically it. Um, so where are we with this right now? Um, it has been a while, I guess the last time, and I know, I know like Stephanie and Justin and people have been, have been demoing it. So this, nothing here should come as too big of a shock, uh, what the new interface looks like and, and stuff. I can tell you what I've been working on recently. Um, we have a, a, an interesting new model uh, with respect to building the conceptual kind of uh, cohesiveness of a b individual building. Before, it's like you just sort of put stuff in the world 
And then if stuff wasn't connected, they were different buildings. But if they are connected, then they're the same building. And it was like sort of implicit and it was kind of like, well, you, you learn the model and then it kind of makes sense. And it you know, mostly makes sense. It gets into some surprises when you're trying to build stuff um, that you thought was supposed to be connected because you did it in, you know, in one sort of one go. Um, that is not how this builder works. Uh, and communicating that has been a little bit of a, of a challenge. So just recently I got uh, this sort of uh, building footprint effect working. Uh, and this is to try to go and sort of uh, really kind of make it clear that, okay, we're actually working on, on you know, this kind of building. And if I go and I, I start a new building, not only does this get grayed out, but you lose that kind of effect. And then you can kind of go over here and then you get back to sort of seeing this nice little footprint. Uh, and the footprint actually is also important. We, we no longer allow you to place things within that footprint um, when you're actually uh, when you've actually started the build. Um, this is so because we don't want to interfere with, you know, the actual uh, construction of the building. So, and, you know, when the hard things are laying scaffolding and stuff, this is something that would happen a lot in the old builder or enough that it was annoying. People would go and like move their berry bushes around the, the edges of the building. And, and then that would get in the way of the scaffolding and they couldn't take the scaffolding down. And it was like, oh, now your building is stuck. Oh God. Um, so that's part of it. But the, the other part is just to try to really hammer home that like, oh great. <laughs> What's your problem? Attempt to index a null value. Did I mention that we got a, one or two little things to work out? Oh, and now it's fine, of course. Um, yeah, uh, so that's one of the things. Um, and just getting this efficient, it's kind of gross when you like pull things away and then you got to make sure it clips against the terrain. Um, but it seems to be otherwise working relatively well. It will probably not update in real time just because of the expense, but hopefully, yeah, maybe there'll be some things we can do there. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Please work on the UI. Yep. Uh, expect the banner starting. Uh, oh, uh, that's another thing. Um, especially if you've been actually playing with a little bit of, uh, 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 with the uh, if you're one of those like uh, like uh, Weiss or, or Mega Shop who's been playing with this. Sorry, let me back up. I got this is this is going to take a little bit of uh, a little bit of time to to explain. Oh, what is your problem, Grr. Okay, you know what? Just in case. Like I said, I got news. Oh, you know what? I'm going to save my, uh, my stonehearth.log because that was like a rando thing. I haven't even run into that before. Just keep that around. OK. Um, building now, in addition to being more reliable, should give you more feedback if something is going wrong. So let me demonstrate. Um, common thing, you can notice everyone here is up on a plateau. They got plenty of resources. Everything's great. Uh, but I'm going to go and I'm going to put a building right over here. Um, and let's go and build this. And so immediately, uh, this is a little heavy. I'm not saying this is exactly how this is going to look, but this is currently how it looks right now. Um, so what happened, we clicked the build button. And if you'd been watching the stream before, we actually had you place a marker somewhere in the world, which would tell the hearthlings conceptually where they had to start from in order to try to be able to reach the building. And it was a confusing metaphor that was more or less a hack that I was kind of hoping I could get away with. And then everyone was like, Chris, what the heck are you doing? This is terrible. Don't do it this way. Um, so this does this sort of automatic building plan generation thingy. Um, and it doesn't know where your hard things are necessarily. There are some, there's some instances where we can kind of be clever and we can try to like try to, try to flow the building towards them, but they're very, very far away. There's no overlapping pieces, so they're not quite smart enough to realize that um, what they need to do in order to be able to get to this. And so you can see that the bottom, the bottom uh, is glowing red. And in particular, this is the piece the hearthlings want to work on that they cannot reach. Um, so what we're going to do is, it's right now saying, oh, what's going on? I can't reach it. Ah. And we are just going to go and add a little ladder over here. To do this guy's gonna bang out a ladder and then suddenly like everyone's like hey party time and so they come on down and they start working and then yeah they start to build up so this should work in general so when you have some structure and if you know god forbid the building system isn't quite smart enough to realize that uh it was not buildable like i.e there was an error in the system or um you otherwise like did something to the environment that made it unbuildable. Like it might have been the case that these were already connected, and so you had you know uh, the, the, the hard things were able to get here, um, but then you remove you know uh, uh, the uh, uh, you remove the um, uh, the ladder or whatever, uh, and so no hard things can reach it anymore. Uh, you know you need to be informed of that, and being able to tell you what pieces are. Uh, uh, are, are no longer reachable is basically what we're trying to trying to accomplish. Like I said, it's a little bit heavy. It's very, very red. Um, it's like college over again. Big red pen for ice cream. 
<laughs> yeah, okay. So yeah, we don't want to make you feel stupid. It's not about like you did something wrong, but like, ah, oh, the hard things are in trouble. Um, can I still make build uh, brick by brick? Uh, yes, you absolutely can. Uh, in fact, I like showing this off. Uh, not that old builder, new builder. Uh, we still have our, our nice voxel tool over here. And I can see it just created a new building when I, when I dragged that out. Um, but we can go and arbitrarily pull and push and move stuff around. So yeah, we definitely have all of the, uh, all of the original capabilities and then some, and it should be a heck of a lot nicer uh, to use. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, does it do this for missing resources too? Yeah, so it already does that. In fact, the old builder will go and check to see if strictly speak, just strictly the resources, not the actual fixtures, because that's, as it turns out, kind of hard, because you might have the resources necessary to craft the fixtures, and then your, uh, your, you know, your, your carpenter is in the middle of going and, and constructing those fixtures. Um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, the resources, it should be warn you if you don't have any resources, and it should warn you if no hearthlings can reach a piece of the building after, uh, you know, a certain period of time has passed. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, voxel measuring. Uh, yeah. It's just again. So this is this is probably what will hit on the, the building very unstable. In the meantime, like we don't have a road tool. You can see this is this is a, a, a grayed out. So we have to add that back. Uh, we have to add back the measurement stuff and be able to go and, and put that in. So we'll do all of that. Like that's that's coming. It's just we're we're kind of trying to go through and kind of prioritize and, uh, the the order in which we go and like add all the all the, uh, the the bits to this so it's coming so don't worry about that yeah oh if you haven't seen it these are Mally's ladder animations um, it's it's quite nice to, to see this after all this time they no longer walk down like like idiots and <laughs> you can see I think it, are they holding it in their mouth like I don't know how they're hold on can I pause this where is it or is it just mounted on the on the bone I either way it looks great I love the fact that like you can still see that they're carrying something um, yeah that's great stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, so what else? So yeah, so we have the building system that tells you if stuff is broken or not. Um, we've got the new kind of highlights around the building. Uh, I think you've probably seen most of the tools already. Um, got the paint stuff. We're basically just going through, yeah, like you saw, there's some bugs, fixing those, trying to get like uh, uh, just everything as get the, all the all the obvious stuff that everyone else is going to run into and complain about uh, out of the way first so that people can go and really kind of dig into it and find some of the more obscure things and just kind of keep going from there sort of you know, all over and over and over again until we finally we finally get ourselves to stable yeah I don't know where it is I don't know what they're I love that they're holding it somehow but yeah <laughs> um, so that's basically all I've been working on for you know <laughs> the last year. Um, is there anything else immediately? Like, there's just been a lot of infrastructural stuff. There's been a lot of um, oh, templates. I can show you that. Let's go and actually one of the one of the things I was trying to get right just before this. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, just before uh, starting the stream was it's really annoying. It's a really annoying problem. But uh, Ali made this lovely like um, you can see over here this. Uh, 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 pier with a little like sort of cottage on it um, and trying to get this to line up exactly where I want is is well we have this problem where <laughs> we're not flush with the ground um, so I have to kind of go through this ridiculous song and dance and just kind of pull everyone down and I think that should work that that I mean I can I can do it yay you know that's nice oh interesting and you can see that this isn't actually uh, this should be there should be a little, oh, maybe it's, no, there should be a little uh, little thing around them, but there isn't. Okay, yeah, like I said, uh, this is an interesting case where we actually can uh, detect that, A, you're not reachable, you can't hit these points first, but they're smart enough to actually know that they can place ladders themselves to get there. This is because this is actually coincident with a space that the, the hard things are on. Um, and so now the whole the whole troop is going to come in, and they're going to start going and hammer on this, and then they can actually go and, and construct the building. So, yeah, it's it's been a lot of of kind of trying to get this model in a more or less intelligible place so that it's understandable. You don't have to do a lot of manual stuff, placing you know items and replacing banners and things like that to get the building going. Um, and then also giving reasonable feedback that you know there there is a problem or at least a potential problem, and then allowing you know uh, players to go and like basically fix that. Um, let's see. Uh, 
inner scaffolding rather than outer. Oh, uh, totally dependent now. There, there is, there, it, they, they basically will choose scaffolding that makes the most sense, where the most sense is, uh, you know, if I can reuse some scaffolding, then that means I don't have to go and like, you know, do a whole other, you know, different side of scaffolding. Um, if the one side is extremely long and the other side is very, very short, well, they'll tr tend towards the shorter side if they can. Um, so that's basically, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's no longer this like always go on the outside kind of thing. Um, problem is I try to build castle walls and the centers are hollow with no doors and closed off and they always get stuck inside the door. Um, you gotta, you gotta let them out, dude. <laughs> you gotta have some, you know, there, there's only so much you could do. Like, they're not, they're not gonna be smart enough to be like, well, I better be on the other side of this working, you know, so I don't get trapped on the inside. If you build like a hollow cube, it's, it's possible that they'll just sort of get stuck in there. So, um, that said, there, you know, once we've gotten to stable and I think once things are, are, you know, looking good, uh, we can start exploring renovation and like, you know, cutting holes into buildings and, you know, maybe pushing around walls and doing stuff like that. Um, and so that certainly there's that, that use case where people will go and they'll, they'll make their first house and it'll be two stories and they'll forget to put it like, you know, a little hole in the floor. And so like, oh, okay, I can't actually get up there anymore. How, how do I, what do I do? Um, being able to go and just make little alterations like that, it would be a pretty, pretty uh, crucial thing. It's the berry bush floating. Uh, the berry bush, I wonder why I just, why is it floating? Oh, collision region is actually pretty large on this thing. So it's just enough of it is is able to go and sort of rest on that side. It's not uh, it's not voxel perfect. Look at this monstrosity. This is the the envelope. This is the I really should run defrag on that region. That's horrifying. Okay, I should do that. Um, this is actually the uh, the no fly zone. This is where if you're like you try to put something because you're like oh I I want to move my berry bushes around. It's gonna be like no 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 you can't put them in there. That's that's. That's no bueno. You could you could interrupt the the building flow, and that'll that'll destroy the whole world. Uh, let's make sure that that is in fact the case still. So if I try to go, yeah. So you see, I can I can I can put it underneath. Like I can put it right over here. That's all right. But I can't put it in a place where there's going to be like scaffolding coming down or anything in the way. So one of the one of the many eyes and in, in, that needs to be dotted or T's that need to be crossed in order to like get all this stuff to work nicely. Um, what else? Uh, is a post built building editor plan. So that's that's the renovation tool basically that we we're I was just sort of mentioning. Uh, yeah, we want to be able to do that. The exact extent and the 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 scope of that remains to be seen once we sort of have this stable and see how things work. Um, but yeah, like like I said, being able to like just cut a hole in a in a roof or a floor or whatever after you've already gone and placed something would be super invaluable. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, more templates. Uh, Cassandra has been doing some kind of crazy work um built me a castle <laughs> it is it is a gorgeous gorgeous structure um and it builds the whole damn thing actually builds uh which is really really nice um actually something I've, i finally kind of figured out something i finally noticed about cathandra's builds they're they're really really beautiful and intricate but also they don't punish the building system that much they're built in such a way that um, they're they're pretty. The system's pretty accommodated by 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 kind of where things are placed and how things are placed and how they flow. Um, so yeah, but this actually will work now. Um, I'm not going to do it because it takes like forever, and the hard things tend to starve to death. Um, which is actually another thing I want to look at once we kind of get to stable. Is is this should be achievable in a non you know month of in game time? It would be nice to go and there, there's some rules I was thinking of kind of flexing and, and breaking a little bit when it comes to making hard things build a little bit faster. Um, yeah, so what else? Uh, were there any other good templates? Stephanie had a nice little thing. Uh, and then I had some test stuff that was going on. Um, I think I showed the, the up and down mode so that you can go and look inside and make alterations without having to like, you know, do really, really obnoxious stuff, pulling all kinds of things away. That's pretty nice. Um, you know, this is now actually fast. It doesn't the, the RPG mode doesn't bring your machine to a halt. Uh, still have to implement the total cutaway RPG thing. Again, one of those things that we're just punting on for the moment until we get to, until things are nice and fast. Uh, I think I've shown off all the tools. Shown off that. Um, can we have a, a way to cut stairs into cliff sides uh, with the building editor? Uh, not yet. That's something that a lot of people ask for, and I think that we're, one of the things, well, another thing that people ask for is the ability to go and actually make terrain like objects. So instead of having you know this being a nice sort of 
you know, building structure made out of wood or whatever, you'd be able to go and place like, sa uh, you know, uh, sod and, and, and dirt and whatnot. Um, and so that would probably tie in quite nicely with uh, being able to go and, and kind of uh, put, a, put, a, put an imprint um, on, the, uh, on a building, you know, sort of cliffside and be able to go and do a cutaway or whatnot. So, so hopefully we'll be able to get something like that. Holes in crenellated roofs. Yeah, uh, I mean, yes, just I haven't written that yet. In fact, I don't think I've written it, right? Yeah, it doesn't work yet. Um, shouldn't be a problem. Roofs are so slow. Roofs are dog slow. It's really annoying. Um, there's actually another branch I've got where I've been doing some client-side improvements that make like dragging them around better and faster, but like their generation is just disgusting. Um, but yeah, the, the point is that you should be able to put holes in, in roofs as well. I mean, I know people are going to want to put like, you know, chimneys and things like that. So that's, that's something we'll, it's just a matter of like adding that extra bit of code. Um, will you be adding paints or wood tints that have to be earned in order to get different colors? Uh, that's, so we have a paint tool. Um, uh, nothing has to be earned out, out, outside of the fact that like you actually need the resources and able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, actually you know, build that if you don't have enough wood or if you don't have any clay or stone. Um, but expanding the color palette is something we definitely talk about again and again. Like, you know, there's, there's actually been a bunch of mods that just add different colored stones and things like that, um, which, like, that just seems like a no-brainer and something we should hopefully be able to get in. So, um, we ever make a multiplayer PvP mode uh, and fight each other? Uh, so the multiplayer right now is, is specifically focused around co-op. Um, that said, I know that there was a recent multiplayer test where I, I think I think it was Linda or maybe it was Stephanie or maybe it was Morgan. I don't remember who. Someone was very violent. They changed. You can just go to the console and you can just change the amenity of like, or or, or em, was it amenity amenity. No, it's not amenity. It's amenity uh, between your side and another player. Um, and within you know a couple seconds, they basically started attacking one another because now they were they were recognizing each other as uh, as bad guys. Uh, I don't think PVP is not really the, the sort of the spirit that we're trying to capture with Stonehearth per se. I, you know, you can mod it in pretty easily, but in terms of the, what we've been trying to build into multiplayer, the, the focus of it has been on sort of just playing with friends and building, you know, a kingdom together and, and building that, that, that castle together. Um, let's see. Uh, so that was that. That was this. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little tired today. It's been a long couple of months, basically, just shepherding this thing in, trying to get us to uh, to the point where we can almost release this out. So if I seem a little bit slow, that's probably all that it is. Um, what else? Uh, do, do, do. All the templates are still old. We have to convert all of these and, and put them into the, into the new system. Um, the other thing I was looking at, I was actually doing some lag analysis. I mentioned the multiplayer stuff. And so one of the major things we're doing like right now is like, under like you know, uh, under uh, uh, thanks, Brad. <laughs> no, he's always like this. I'm the exact opposite. I never shut up, but I always talk too fast. This is like the first time I've I've ever had like a remotely human pace. Um, oh, and do you have an ET on how far out multiplayer is? Uh, I know that we have some vague dates. I, I, nothing I want to say out loud yet, um, just because. Like we're we're at a part right now where we're we're doing this performance analysis and we're doing this 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 testing, and that's one of those ones where it's like maybe this will take five hours or maybe this is going to take five months. It's not going to take five months, but uh, there's there's a sort of kind of unbounded potentially unbounded amount of work before we get things into like a really solid place. Um, so uh, we're we're going to conti continue to kind of just work on that, and it's not that far off, um, and it's totally fine. Like. By all means, let, you know, your friends should wait until, you know, the game is in the state they want it in before they can go and buy it. Um, but it's, it's, it's not that far. So that's basically all I'll say. Um, yeah, palette. Uh, if you expand the color palette without having to earn new colors, uh, will the palette become bloated? That's the thing. Like, it's, 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 I mean, it's easy to add any colors, but how do you add colors that work with one another? How do you avoid the sort of massive cornucopia of like, you know, technicolor rainbow? Um, mods are a nice solution because we just sort of pass the buck. And then you know, if you want to go and like have your, you know, ridiculous sort of candy land sort of thing, uh, you can do that. Um, having it, yeah, balance with the, the aesthetic that we have, with the colors that we've chosen, uh, it's an alley question. It's not a Chris question. Um, I'm sure you can definitely poke her about that. Um, 
but uh, yeah, don't open Pandora's box uh, multiplayer just yet. Yeah, well, I mean, we're opening it on a daily basis. Uh, do you have an ETA when this builder will be an unstable? Uh, yeah, so as I, I did mention this at the beginning, uh, the idea is, yeah, oh, and other people. Uh, so the idea is not this Monday, but next Monday we go to a very unstable build. Uh, which is going to be, we will basically announce it on, on Discourse, uh, but probably not even mention it uh, on the front page on, on stonehearth.net, just to kind of keep it uh, 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 on, the, uh, on the, the true believers, the people who go and visit, visit the, uh, the Discourse. Um, it'll just be a password protected thing, but we'll, the password, like we're not trying to keep it a secret, we just want to kind of you know, make sure only the people who really want to use it uh, will find it. And then my anticipation is probably one to two weeks of time there before we go on to Unstable, and then another one to two weeks of time there before we actually hit stable. Those dates are always subject to change, but I, I, I think the, the this Monday thing is, or sorry, the next coming Monday um, is a pretty 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 uh, pretty safe bet. Um, I would I would definitely say it's it would be something that's astonishing would have to be found in order to delay it that much further. Um, yeah, so, and then adding a color wheel. Uh, yeah, I mean like we could totally do that. Uh, I mean you have to. I guess. Is it wood? Is it stone? Is it clay? Would you just be able to go and... I don't know. Like, the, the whole point was to... Hmm, yeah. I don't know. It, it's, like, it's not it's not a technically hard thing to do in the slightest. It's just a matter of, like, okay, we actually have to open this up and, and, and present it in a way that will make sense and, again, hopefully kind of keep the aesthetic more or less what we want. Um, yeah, like I said, poke alley. Um, is there anything else? Uh, I can show you a little bit of the... Uh, this is the. This is an awesome tool. This is okay. Switching gears violently. Oh, and let's get you guys back because I actually want to see where you are. Um, this is an amazing tool called Telemetry. I love this. This is one of my favorite programmer tools. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, this is a means of basically just getting data out of Stonehearth. We can see all kinds of interesting things. We can. I can show you, for example, like. This is like the simulation starting up, and we're. This is this is a sorry. This is a timeline. Uh, you read it from left to right, just as any other kind of timeline you'd guess you traditionally read, of like we're bringing the simulation online. This is happening on on the server sort of thread. It's going creating a bunch of entities and whatnot. And the client thread starts up, and the client thread starts doing things. This is a just. It's a great name. It's called telemetry, and it is telemetry. We're getting back data, telling us sort of what's happening in in, in the program and where where things are kind of occurring, what kind of actions are being taken. You know, this is. Uh, the client going and getting a bunch of messages and, and actually turning on and actually creating these modules, these, these script modules that then actually kind of host the, the game. Um, the stuff I've been looking at, we were talking about multiplayer, we we're talking about performance, um, is trying to diagnose situations where we go and basically send way too much data to the client, uh, way too much data that we, we wouldn't otherwise need to. Uh, the way that the, the networking sort of works in, in Stonehearth, uh, we go and uh, basically, any changes that we detect on the on the server side, we go and we push to the client. But we do it in sort of big buckets. Um, it's it's we have these things called data stores, which hold our, all of our data, and we kind of just group things together, sort of logically, um, which can sometimes lead to performance problems. And this is actually what I'm looking at over here. This is sort of the, the, the data being transmitted outside of Stonehearth, just doing a very simple thing. We are getting a, a bunch of hearthlings to go and and pick up a bunch of uh, uh, a uh, bunch of like pieces of stone in a world that already has a lot of stone, a lot of items, and move them into a stockpile. And this is where I, this is when I place the stockpile right over here. This is when they start picking up stuff. This is when they start walking over towards the other stuff. Uh, the uh, this is when they yeah pick up the stone. This is when they start walking over the stockpile, and this is when they start going and and, and uh, dropping off all the stone. Um, and these are the average uh, bytes per second that we're sending. You know, so sort of the instantaneous average, if you will. Um, while we're doing this, and some of these are in like 300k a second, which is ridiculous for what's happening. It is it is extraordinarily disproportionate. Um, and so, so Angelo and Linda have been been spearheading this. They've been going and doing a bunch of work trying to like start putting in instrumentation and kind of figure out what's going on. I figured I'd like try to lend a hand a little bit just in between some of the building work because it is an important thing. Uh, and just started investigating some of this and just just actually I didn't even know like we didn't even um, have a great idea 
for how much data was being transmitted uh, in Stonehearth until like just we basically started putting in all this instrumentation. Um, so it's actually really, really cool and a little bit terrifying. It's very, very big. I would, I would expect things to be more in sort of this range or maybe even this range. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of work we have to do on, on sort of compressing streams and compressing all the data that's going back and forth. Um, yeah, I realized it was a bit of a, of a gear switch, but that's probably what I'm gonna just take a peek at right now. Um, do, 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 more more color stuff. Uh, just, okay, you wanna bug, you, you bug Stephanie and you bug Allie and you sell both of them on it. I'm on the engineer. I, oh, you want red? You want like bright green? Okay, uh, go and convince them. Be like, look, we just want a color palette. We wanna be able to go and just put some arbitrary paint in the world because damn it, sometimes a wall needs to be chartreuse. Uh, and, and I think if you do that, and specifically say chartreuse, uh, then I, I think you'll be able to, you'll be able to go and, and convince them. Um, yeah, like this color, whatever this is, this, this, I mean, I'm a guy, this, I, I can see like 16 shades. This is purple. This is kind of yellow. I have no, it's mustard yellow, maybe. Uh, charge the castle. Indeed, indeed. Um, no, that's the thing though. The, the keepers of the castle are pretty reasonable. So I think you just, you know, let, let them know. Let them <laughs> Uh, any more thoughts into multi-threading the AI Pathfinder? Uh, multi-threading the AI is is basically impossible uh, due to the way Stonehearth is constructed. Pathfinder is an interesting one. Um, the Pathfinder is is definitely conceivable that we could have them all sort of run in parallel, and, and then you have to you have to still deliver the answers serially because of the way that the simulation model works. Um, I wonder when we'll get to that. I don't know. The Pathfinder shouldn't be killer right now anymore with topology service going and 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 like uh being able to eliminate all the the costly work of trying to to, to find paths to things that don't even work uh that don't even exist um you shouldn't be seeing too much if you have any saves that do if you see stuff where like the acer pathfinder goes crazy like get send, put something on the discourse you know at my name or whatever and i'll i'll, I'll come call, i'll come running um yeah trust me you want to engineer focus on optimization definitely um and then th earning dies would be a great thing for the base game. Yeah, people do that a lot. You know, now that you mention it, like I'm just suddenly thinking about like, like, uh, like I was playing The Witcher three, well, I guess a couple months ago or whatever. And yeah, by the time you get to the final chapters, you're like, you're getting dies, and you can die your grandmaster armor and all that. Uh, that was actually pretty cool. I kind of like that. But again, they did restrict the number of colors you could use. But regardless, I I, I take your point. Um, He's going to go to them and complain that his stream was swarmed with people. Except for this <laughs> they are, you are always watched. They are looking at this. And I'm sure Stephanie is just like kind of shaking her head just a little bit. Um, actually, I wonder, can I? No, that's probably already done by now. Um, hmm. So where would die come from? Like you normally like old dyes are like you get them from, you get them from metals, you get them from plants. I mean, we could have like dye plants that are exclusively to that. And maybe some are rarer than others and you get them and then suddenly you get colors and that could unlock like extra colors or something like that. Um, yeah, insects, that's right. Oh my God. Yeah, every, basically anything. Okay, anything that we can like smash up and like turn into some kind of paste is where you can get dye from. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So you could, you could farm the plant Okay, not not to design a totally new system. Maybe you could even breed plants together. Like you could re read an, an R and a B plant, and then you get like you know purple or or whatever. But um, that would be kind of nice. Hmm. And it would just fit in kind of naturally. I mean, now the thing is, we've got this on stone wood. It makes no sense to have them as particular materials. So maybe you just do a paint. Like, we already got this paint thing over here. You can paint with, I mean, this is almost absurd in the sense that, like, oh, I'm, I'm, well, it's not absurd. I, the, the semantic is I'm going and I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a, a, I'm actually letting you adjust the material of individual blocks. But maybe if we actually had, like, materials and then paint as another sort of tab and you open that up and now you have your, or dyes, and here is your entire selection of dyes. And then we could map them so that it would be the same material. It would be clay, but it would be blue clay. Or it would be wood, but blue wood. And that's the conceit. Because this is ultimately the problem. Remember, the hearthlings have to build the thing. Um, uh, and so the hearthlings have to go and get like 
like this is is this wood is it clay is it stone what is the material and then the color is this sort of like semi-orthogonal thing um but then yeah so if you actually just had the dye and the dye maps back to whatever you know sort of the color of the wood or the uh yeah that could work and we we couldn't now we actually reserve colors to indicate their material so like this shade is reserved for wood this exact shade like i know it looks like we got some sh similar shades going on but no 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 that's wood so but regardless you could just like pick you know one hue you know like literally one like h or, or s or, or v you know in that space and then th this would be the wood uh clay stone thing of that color and then we would just go and, and use those and yeah okay that could work that could work. <laughs> Why am I thinking about color? I love this. This is hilarious. Uh, do, 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 die system now forefront of the roadmap. Indeed. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, the sulfide totally gets it. Uh, yeah. So you see what you've done? Yeah. You see what you've done? Indeed. Uh, that's why I said RGB to each type. Yeah. I mean, it, that's what it ultimately it has to be. I kind of don't like that. It's very easy. It was a very n nice conceit that made building lots of parts of the engine easy, but it would be nice to have like we had a dual tag for a voxel so it wasn't just a color it was also a material oh, that's like 64 bits of voxel though but whatever our double we're using doubles everywhere so they were already at 64 bits let's bite that bullet um yeah uh do 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 what was i gonna say um oh no you were talking about yeah uh was it a variant someone was talking about uh uh, uh the pathfinder yeah i want to show you something I got because I wrote so much of this debug stuff. I wanna I wanna at least like hey take a look at what I've done because it's kind of cool. Um, I've got all these debug stuff, all these debug things for for buildings. Um, let's see, step the building plan. Let's show you this. Do the telemetry. No no no, no. telemetry is telemetry is networking. This is this is we're gonna talk topology for a moment. So I mentioned like I'm gonna show you actually how the under under the under the scenes and the guts of this thing, this actually is working. It's like Legos. We start with a bunch of Legos and we peel the Legos away. Um, that's going to be too big. That's going to be too small. This will probably be just right. I think this is good. So you place your building and then you click build and then go to nav grid. No, sorry. Uh, nav. What is it? Nav viz? Yeah, nav grid viz. Sorry. Topology all. This is not actually in the world. This, what these colors you are seeing, and look at them. Look at these, look at this wonderful short tooth. Uh, that all I can see is the color, guys. Look what you're doing to me. Um, this is the topological representation of the building in the alternate universe, in this little bubble nav grid, um, uh, where we go and we do our computation, where we figure out uh, where stuff is going to go, and and kind of come up with this building plan. And the way we do it with the building plan is you start with the final product, you start with the final building, and you start pulling off Legos. Or Lego is the plural of Lego. Okay, fine. You pull off an individual Lego, and you pull off another Lego. And you keep pulling them off such that you only remove pieces that you know you can reach. Um, and you do that by like saying, okay, I've, can I reach this already? If I can't, can I put a ladder there? And do I need some scaffolding? And that's basically sort of, uh, that's the, the, the whole, uh, uh, the, 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 the basics of the algorithm in a nutshell is you're, you're always checking to see if a piece, piece is reachable and we do that using the topology. So we do it in steps. So when I say step plan, something just happened. Those two little colorings at the top, we figured out how to place those pieces. So we pulled them off and now we're looking at the roof. We're looking at the bit that's right underneath it. So I'm gonna go and step the plan again and you can see pulled off another piece of color and another piece of color, another piece of color, another piece of color. We're building it backwards. We're going and figuring out what needs to, what pieces are reachable at this point, and then pulling those off, exposing more pieces to be reachable. Um, and so if I kind of engage this alternate view, it's not the, not the prettiest thing in the universe right now, but hopefully it gets, the, uh, it gets the idea across. As I keep stepping, you'll keep seeing more and more pieces come across, come down. Stuff will become reachable that wasn't reachable before until eventually we're gonna hit to the very bottom of the whole thing, and now the plan has been configured out. And oh, why do you guys think that's unreachable? That's interesting. Oh, probably because I was single stepping and it was extremely confused. Um, yeah, and so that is actually so that's the topology service in action. That's the the building plan in action as we go and and you know basically pull all these pieces off. Um, and that's that's how this works. That's the the heart of it, the gut of it. 
Um, and that's the visualization I use in order to be able to like figure out what the hell I'm even doing because as it turns out, trying to just stare at text logs is kind of difficult and a little bit counter, a little bit uh, time consuming. Um, yeah, you came back and it's purple. See exactly. There you go. That we've got the dye, we've got the colors. I got the palette. I'll pull out the garish, purposely clashing palette that I chose to figure out the topology colorings of the universe, and that will be the new dyes that will be going in. Um, I love it. I love that. I, I did not expect to have a, a long conversation about about dyes uh, today. Um, yeah. So that's that's the building plan stuff. Um, shoot. What else am I going to show you? I don't know. I'm. Everyone's just like. Just like I said, we're just fixing stuff. We're just getting, putting on the polish, trying to get everything ready. It's not glamorous right now. Um, it's not like a fancy pants new UI. This is actually, you probably haven't seen this. Uh, Nikki's been reorganizing some of the icons down here so things line up and we don't have quite the explosion of like, oh God, stuff is everywhere in my face. Um, oh, then there's also the uh, the list of all the, the items that you need for the building. We just, again, that's that's supposed to be there. That's in the old one, but like we're putting things back. We're, get, we're getting to parity with the builder and in, in, in sort of all the other important ways. Um, what have I done? I was wondering about dyes for weeks and weeks now. Yeah, and now you have purple roofs. <laughs> or you have, you have dynamically changing colored roofs. Um, what else is there? Shoot, what am I going to show you guys? We did the telemetry, showed you some some of the network stuff. Um, I'm gonna try to convert this into a means of, of figure. We can use this to go and figure out hopefully what kinds of data we're actually sending, and then you kind of tone it down so that you don't see nearly as much data. Um, I don't know. It's 9:43, and I f oh, is this the ideal Hearthlings bug fix? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, sometimes yes. Uh, sometimes there are going to be cases where like they don't know how to build a building, um, and that means that they just idle when they should in fact be working. So this, a lot of the stuff that's around uh, around that particular uh, 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 problem space should be fixed, but I know there are other AI bugs just because the AI system is so so complex and so unwieldy. It's very sad. Uh, oh, that was uh, an alley designed house. Uh, she's uh, uh, been slowly kind of acclimating to the new builder and giving me good feedback and stuff and, and using that to kind of like build out stuff. Anything that's like small and cute is like, it's just, that's Allie's name. She doesn't do castles, she does little cottages. Um, what else is there? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Um, I don't know. I could take some more questions or whatever, but I think, uh, oh, do buildings like castles improve combat ability of hearthlings? Uh, are you going to make new modes? Okay, one at a time here. Uh, no combat abilities being conferred by buildings. That should be strictly like talisman, uh, leveling up, that sort of thing. Uh, buildings in our conception are mainly about just sort of providing shelter and whatnot. Um, I'm looking forward to, if renovation works, introducing destructible buildings so that pieces can get taken. Because that's the thing. Actually, just destructible buildings are really easy. Taking pieces out of them is incredibly trivial. Um, the problem is when people are like, hey, you took a piece out of my building. I, I want to put it back. And like, oh, I need a builder that can like actually do that and actually like, you know, allow you to renovate, basically. That's essentially what you're doing. Um, so hopefully that will add some new strategic and combat elements to the game there. Um, in terms of modes, I'm not sure what you are referring to. Um, uh, will there be a way to separate town? Oh, like go on uh, and like do a do a reembarkment or something like that. Uh, it's an interesting idea. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, any other AI performance? Oh, in multiplayer. Sorry. Uh, do you think your town's hard things to know about the other players' ladders when they're shrouded in fog of war? Uh, are there players? You should be able to see every. Or yeah, you should be able to see everybody's stuff. Um, regardless of their, their shrouding in the fog of war. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We do a full replication, so everything, the, the, the client gets like all of the data that the server is, base, is able to see. Um, so, yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, any other AI performance uh, solutions in mind besides limiting unneeded client server com? <sighs> Rewrite the whole damn thing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, you do the best that you can at the time, um, based upon what you know and what what you think you know. Um, using Lua was not a great idea. 
Um, going to Lua JIT is extremely hard now because of the fact that we use coroutines in, in, we, uh, in our Lua library and our coroutines cross C stack boundaries and so uh, Lua JIT's like, no, no, no bueno. Um, that's fixable. Maybe that means we can get to Lua JIT. I'm a little skeptical about that giving us an instantaneous performance boost just because we haven't been tuning for it. I know Lua JIT likes to have things that are in arrays. It dislikes maps, uh, which is like any other high performance language. Um, the AI system uh, was built to always think. And it was built at a time when we, we couldn't even know when something was reachable or not. We had to A star the world constantly. Like that's how, that's how we found stuff. It was just like, oh, can I path to it or not? And so you just blow away all these, these CPU cycles. And so it had to be in this sort of active way of constantly evaluating plans. And in retrospect, a three-stage system would be far superior, where you would have uh, once the first stage is a very, very sort of low, uh, low CPU utilization stage of like, is it even vaguely possible to run this plan? Like, I'm not going to run a star. I'm not going to do like crazy computations, you know, topology, whatever. Uh, I just want to know, like, is there stuff in the world that I could pick up that I could bring to somewhere else? Like, roughly constant time ish sort of calculations, and then a second stage where you actually go and do real thinking, like trying to do these computations, we're trying to do these plans and whatnot. And then the third stage is where you actually run the thing. And separating those concerns, um, which you, but you need like a topology service, you need to be able to make these instantaneous efficient queries against the world. Um, that would have been really, really nice. Um, I think that would have, that would have given us sort of the headroom to mostly not think and mostly not have to do anything until we truly thought we could do something. So I've been thinking about this stuff for a while. I, I don't have great ideas about making large improvements to the system. I feel it's it's complex enough and it's difficult enough that we're going to be just doing a lot of profiling and trying to find small wins where we can, anywhere we can, to try to, like, you know, and, and I think there still probably are. I think we're still missing. We still haven't done a large kind of pass through of, of of the AI code in a while, just because we keep changing stuff and we keep kind of breaking stuff and then having to fix it. So once we once we get a little bit more serious about that, we'll definitely see some gains. Um, I hope that it's an, it's enough. I, I think it will be, but it's it's frustrating also just when you see when you see the mistakes that you've made. And this is the thing that happens as an engineer is that you you get to know a problem well. And when you go, when you start at the beginning, where you don't know anything about the problem, and you know some stuff, and you know you've had some experience, and so you build some stuff, and it's like, eh, it was the best we could do, and we were wrong about certain things. We were just wrong, like we made mistakes. And now that I see them, and now that I know how I could fix them, but not without like <laughs> taking a blowtorch to substantial portions of the code, um, it's a little bit frustrating. It's but you can't you doing that is like that's that's where you add six months or you know a year of destabilizing work to the to the existing system and that's basically what we did with building building has been a year long uh uh rewrite like i, I actually the first commit was i think a uh, march 22nd in 2017 um and so you know you pick your battle and like building was just utterly broken and and not satisfying and finicky and slow and like like unperformant in all the ways that you know that matter um, so I'm glad that this will be fixed. I wish I could have done something similar for AI, but I think we'll still at least be able to get it into a place where you should be able to have an enjoyable game with a relatively reasonable number of hearthlings uh, without experiencing crazy stuff. So, okay, that was a long rant. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, well, the next update, oh yeah, fix my place at ladder shortcuts. Uh, yes, soon, yeah, we just, someone was like, hey, this, this broke, you guys should fix it. And we were like, oh, damn. Um, to do, do focus on the primary gain. Uh, if you haven't discovered them, oh, I don't know what the the final resolution on seeing other players is going to be. My my understanding is we want players to find each other very very quickly um, in multiplayer. That we want pl people to go and like, oh, you're over there. I'm gonna build right near you, or oh, I'm gonna build a little bit away because you know. Uh, uh, I, I think that's more interesting or whatever. Um, but I think you always want, we want to create that sense that you know where the other person is and or other people are and be able to go and, and you know, uh, uh, go to them and, and trade resources or whatever. Um, to do, uh, 
I asked because AF hasn't been to play his ladders, even though the hearth thing. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Now I see where you're going, Megaship. Um, yeah, AI pathfinding is, in fact, it's the same for monsters as well. Because, like, a monster is like, I want to go and attack you. And so the monster is like, okay, I have perfect knowledge of the entire world. Um, and it's interesting, yeah. It's like StarCraft is, is you know, like in games that are competitive like that. Like, you don't want to right click somewhere and your unit doesn't go there even though they know they, like, like, because they have omniscient ability to know that, oh, I can't actually path into that location. So they have a whole bunch of, like, stuff where they say, okay, pretend you could go through these obstructing structures that you cannot see, um, you know, do this or do that, or, or, you know, make it look like you're going to go in that direction, but then fail, you know, appropriately. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to get to that point. Uh, that's a lot of work to kind of shoehorn that in. And there's, there's a good utility for having AI that is smart enough to know that there's an opening that they can kind of flood into. It's not necessarily the most fair, but on the other hand, players are pretty powerful. So it's nice to go and make sure that uh, the AI will try to exploit little holes that you make and, and weaknesses like that. And certainly as far as you're, you know, in multiplayer situation, everyone should just be using everyone else's ladders. I think that's probably a very reasonable thing to, to keep. Um, would love an enemy on off switch for co-op. Like I said, I, I could I could imagine a, a, just a tiny little mod that's just like, okay, here's a UI, and if you want to declare war, you click the button, and maybe the other player you know clicks the declare war button. It would not be hard to write. You could totally put it in. You could totally go and mess with each other. Um, don't know, I wonder how stable it would be, but... Again, for, for aspiring modders, that's that's not sophisticated. Um, thanks for the rant. 2025 hearth lean limit is a kind of a killer. Yep, I completely, completely agree. Um, how long do you guys want to support the game? Uh, hoping for a while. Yeah, uh, a while sounds like a pretty good thing for me. Um, I don't have numbers, uh, mostly because I'm not just an engineer. <laughs> I'm, I'm but a mere, a mere coder, um, but we don't, we're not going to just let this go. So... I don't know how to do mods. That's the problem. You won't have to. This is such an obvious mod, and this is such a, a straightforward one. Like, if we don't provide it, like, I, I, like I said, I don't think this will be in the main game. We're not going to do it um, as part of the actual interface. But just releasing a little thing that just plugs in, you can get it really, really easily. Uh, it'll be there. It'll be there. <laughs> yeah. If, 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 again, maybe we'll, we will do it. We will just include it as a mod that you can optionally activate if you want to just like mess around and like you know basically that troll each other and, and declare some war. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see. I'll do it with my buddy. Yeah. And, and it's, again, it, it, should not be a, it should not be a sophisticated thing to do. So don't worry. You'll, 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 you'll get to fight. No, no, no doubts about that. Um, actually, something that's, that's really funny, uh, uh, in the new builder, there's some hacky code I need to get rid of that, that sets the player ID of, of certain things. Um, and the player ID of the buildings is, I think, like it's always, or the building plans, the blueprints that are that are being constructed. I just hacked it in months ago, and I hadn't changed it. It was it's always player one. Uh, so, ever oh no, actually, it has nothing to do with the player ID. I just realized it. It has nothing to do with. It has to do with the fact that you're looking for entity chunks uh, to work on, and you're not looking for the player ID. Okay. Point being, everyone builds everyone else's buildings. So like you, you're just you're minding your own business. You you build your thing in the new building editor, and then suddenly like all these other hearthlings from like another camp are coming in and helping. And it's really cute and and kind of aggravating if you're far away. But if you're close to each other, and the idea it it, it was an accident, but like hey this would be pretty cool. Uh, you could opt into it, so you could be like hey I want some help on this building, and the other person's like yeah 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 okay I'll help you, and then you both click on that or whatever. Um, you both turn your keys, and then your hearthlings can go and just gang up on this you know one structure and just like complete the whole damn thing. Um, so stuff like that, like, you know, that, that, that sort of cooperation is definitely sort of the, the multiplayer we're, we're looking for. So just annoyed friends. Yeah. <laughs> I want to not find him in the game when multiplayer comes out. Yep. No, I, I, it's really funny. There are, there are definitely people that just want to go and, and like build and like have a peaceful time and build with other players. And then there's the people that, you know, and you've, if you've played Minecraft, you probably know the guy that like brings the dynamite to the server and they're just like, nah, I just kind of want to blow things. I want to watch the world burn. Um, so yeah, that, that's, uh, both kinds of players are, are definitely going to be happy, I think. Um, so I think this is drawing to a close for me. My voice is getting sort of uh, hoarse and I'm, I'm a little bit tired. Um, so unless there's anything else, uh, I will get back to work. Uh, so like I said, not this Monday, but next Monday, look to the discourse. 
Not to the east, as Gandalf said. That's not what we're doing. We're not. We're not. We're not trying to defend Helm's Deep. Just you know, to the discourse. Uh, there will be an announcement. There will be a branch plus password, um, and new buildings should be available. Again, God willing, and you know, the creek don't rise, and, and no showstopper bugs are found. Uh, we can start finally rolling this out to to lots of players. Uh, I can't wait to see what everyone does with it. Um, burn world, yeah. Ooh, we need explosives. No explosives, damn it. This is hard enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, happy Easter to those that celebrate. Um, oh, and Sulfide has a question. If someone designed a great PvP mod, uh, would you guys officially add it? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, let's see who designs a great PvP mod, and then we'll we'll figure that out. Um, yeah, so on that on that slightly cryptic note, I will leave that alone. Uh, happy Stone Hearthing. I will see you in a couple of weeks again, hopefully with a lot more interesting stuff, not necessarily even building related. Uh, I, I can't wait to go and start working on other parts of the system again. Um, yeah, and maybe making multiplayer fast and, and all that stuff. In fact, that'd be a wonderful next stream is like, gonna do a multiplayer thing from Toronto to all the way to California. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, so have a great weekend. Uh, great chatting with you all as, as usual. Uh, until next time.